Artificial sweeteners and dieting. Or should I actually say artificial sweeteners and not dieting? Researchers wanted to take a look at basically why artificial sweeteners were not helping people lose weight. It's calorie free, it's not sugar, it should make a difference. And not only on top of that, in some people, artificial sweeteners were helping gain weight. So, the researchers wanted to see what happened in animals. And what they did is took a group of rats and they administered well within the permitted range of the FDA three artificial sweeteners. They gave saccharin, they gave sucralose, and they gave aspartame. And what they did is they put in a 10% solution of the three most common commercially available forms in place of regular drinking water. The animals had elevated blood glucose levels after 11 weeks compared to mice either given a 10% glucose solution or water alone. So, ha, huh, there was a clue. The glucose intolerance levels went out of whack after a short period of time. So then, they couldn't quite figure that part out because, again, it's calorie-free and it's no sugar. So they wanted to see what it did affect, especially since the artificial sweeteners were not being absorbed into the body itself, but stay within the intestinal tract. Ah, the gut bacteria. This is what gets really interesting. These guys did an excellent job. The researchers treated the mice with antibiotics to eradicate many of their gut bacteria. Sounds bad, but listen to what happened. The resulted, this resulted in a full reversal of the artificial sweeteners effects on glucose metabolism. This is where it gets even more intriguing. Next, they transferred the microbiota from the mice that consumed the artificial sweetener to germ-free mice resulting in a complete transmission of the glucose intolerance into the recipient mice. So, the mice they fed their artificial sweeteners to, in this case, now we're moved to saccharin, because saccharin is the one they continued with. They basically said, oh, your system's messed up. Let's see what happens. We'll take the gut bacteria and give it to uh, mice which haven't been exposed to artificial sweeteners. Well, the mice that got the gut bacteria from the ones that had the glucose intolerance from consuming saccharin end up developing the exact same glucose intolerance. There was a key. All right, so after they transferred that gut bacteria and found out, well, the glucose intolerance went along with it, they decided to use human volunteers. Now, within the permitted form amount of the FDA, they gave these human volunteers artificial sweeteners for just one week. These were volunteers who were not accustomed to consuming artificial sweeteners at all. So they had a nice base control. Guess what happened? After seven days, the findings showed that many, but not all, of the volunteers had begun to develop glucose intolerance after just one week, one week, one week of artificial sweetener consumption. How did that happen? Just one week. What the heck? Well, this is what they speculated after looking at all the things, how basically artificial sweeteners affected the body through the gut bacteria. Alanov, which I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, so I apologize, believes that certain bacteria in the guts of those who developed the glucose intolerance reacted to the chemical sweeteners by, you ready for this? Secreting substances that then provoked an inflammatory response similar to a sugar overdose promoting changes in the body's ability to utilize sugar, henceforth developing glucose intolerance. Pretty fascinating. They were able to duplicate it often in animals do the same study. I'd like to see further confirmation, but however, the artificial sweeteners seem to have an impact in altering that gut bacteria and causing inflammatory compounds. That's pretty interesting. Thanks once again. You draw your speculation from there. And I'll see you again next week. This is Ralph signing off.